Hello viewers, welcome to one more edition of MineCare Positive Life series. With technological advancement in medical science, our life has changed. As an output, we have got various new processes which govern us today. Laparoscopy, minimal invasive surgery, bariatric surgery are such outputs of medical science. Today we have come to Max Healthcare to talk to Dr. Pradeep Chaube. He is the executive vice chairman here and there are not enough words to describe his credentials. In my words, he is an institution. From him, we are going to learn about laparoscopy and bariatric surgery. Sir, thank you for your time. On behalf of my viewers, I really appreciate that you could uh, find time for us. So I'll directly get into the subject. You have been an institution as far as laparoscopy is concerned. So what is laparoscopy surgery, sir? Uh, laparoscopy is uh, one modality of uh, operation. So in the conventional surgeries, we were uh, cutting open the abdomen so as to make sure that both our hands or hands of the assistants, they go in, we manipulate the organs, we mend them, we remove them, we connect intestines with other uh, uh, this thing. So all the surgery was done with the two hands going inside the abdomen. Right. And we needed a large incisions to make uh, the, the uh, surgery go through. Right. Now laparoscopy is exactly the different of that. That means that we don't have to make an incision. In place of that, we put a telescope uh, through a very small puncture right. and that telescope gives us a view of the abdomen inside. Right. Now instead of putting our hands, we put one or two or three more punctures and all of our instruments enter inside the abdomen right. through that small puncture. Right. That means we the access or the approach towards the organ is done through the telescope which has got a camera mounted right. uh, on top of that and it gives us an image on our screens. Right. So we see everything inside on our screen right. and with our hands and energy sources we manipulate the organ and do the I would say the same operation done in a different manner. Right. If we want to compare it in a general manner we will say that you want to go to uh, another destination. Right. Now the destination you can go by uh, aeroplane right. or you can go by car or a bus or a train right. or by walking. It all depends. The destination remains the same. The aim remains the same. Right. So when you put a telescope in the abdomen, it is known as laparoscopy. Right. If the same telescope you put it in the chest, right. it is known as thoracoscopy. Right. If you put the same telescope into the joint, it is known as orthoscopy. Right. That means that the, the word scopy means where the scope is going. Right, right. And to differentiate various cavities of the body, we change it the name. Right. So a sinus endoscopy, a sinuscopy will be through the nose, it will go into the sinuses. Right, right. So this way the trauma of access is reduced and that is why in technical terms we call it as a minimal access surgery. So uh, minimal access, minimal invasive sounds very serene for the human body. I mean that in itself is an advantage. Other than that would you for our viewers highlight some of the advantages that uh, laparoscopy gives over uh, you know the conventional methods of surgery. All right. Uh, See, we when we started almost 25, more than 25 years back when we started this sort of surgery, we were calling it minimally invasive surgery. Right. But over a period of time, we have realized that invasion remains the same. If you are removing an organ, you are removing an organ. Right. So then we changed it to access right. because what has changed is only the access how we approach that organ. So now the standard. Um, uh, uh, thing is uh, minimal access, access. surgery. Okay. 
and when uh, 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 this surgery was started there was a very uh, lovely uh, cover page of time magazine which uh, i thought explains everything and the title of that cover page was kind cuts of the surgeon okay okay that speaks volume about uh, because surgeons have never been kind till that time surgeons Lepers. have always been kind but i guess viewers find the pain part going over the kindness yeah because you have to make a long incision right to enter the abdomen or a chest or or a brain or a joint right so i would say that those kind cuts have changed over a period of time now as i said uh, the aim of the operation does not change so suppose we are repairing a hernia we repair hernia through endoscopy which can be done by open method also right. and uh, all those organs so the this is one of the advantages right. that uh, the patients can uh, go back resume their normal activity very soon right. because we don't restrict them for a prolonged rest and with the restrictions of not lifting weight and not driving car or a scooter or not climbing stairs right. etc right. so that is just one part of it second part of course is the cosmetic advantage because the punctures are 2 mm and 5 mm and 10 mm the punctures are so small that it's uh, hardly can be seen so right. that gives another advantage of cosmesis right from surgeon's point of view i would say the surgeon's point of view the biggest advantage which we get during surgery is first a very good illumination so any organ which we are visualizing if we are putting almost 350 watt of cold light so it's a it's a great uh, you know visualization of the organ right third uh, second thing is that uh, uh, we are able to differentiate different colors better by the high definition cameras and ultra high definition cameras right. and three dimensional cameras so that means that we are able to differentiate more than what the eye can differentiate in right. the colors right like in all the cameras you see there one color thousand times thousand variation of that color you Absolutely. see Absolutely. so that variation helps us and third which is the most important is we get magnification okay because there is a telescope we were with naked eye we were not getting any magnification right after that another thing which came was a operating loop right. so we used to put it on top of that we was giving us a magnification of 2 and 1/2 times to 4 times depending on the uh, lens of the loop right. but with laparoscopy we can see magnification up to 20 times okay. very comfortably okay. so when we are in doubt we magnify the whole thing we put the telescope in we you know as you um, focus the telescope and when you zoom in the telescope right. you see a big magnification right. that means that if i am stitching something with 20 times magnification the space between two stitches right. and the accuracy of the stitches right. will be much higher Absolutely. than the naked eye which does not have the magnification so uh, it is interesting uh, the way you have uh, highlighted the advantages uh, would you please uh, also talk about the complexities if there are any yeah uh, the point which uh, we must understand is that when we are doing conventional surgery we were getting the three dimensional view we were getting the depth as well right whereas when the we started using a telescope and a, uh, a camera we were getting two dimensional so depth perception was not as good right so we took time to uh, analyze that depth perception right. you know right and now i think all surgeons who are there they are trained in a two dimensional surgery rather than a three dimensional surgery right so that is one aspect of it uh, second is that uh, as the technology is advancing previously our eyes were not advancing right whatever nature has created our eyes right. but now because the ball is in the field of the technologist right. every day we get a better uh, camera system we get a better resolution we get a better so that means our diagnostic capabilities are increasing right our performing capabilities are increasing right and above all the uh, advantage is that we don't have to uh, make incisions on top of that organ okay so you like for all abdominal surgeries most of the cases i would say mm-hmm. we put our telescope around the umbilicus or a navel mm-hmm. 
and the, you turn the telescope to your right, left, you operate on the left, you turn the telescope to right, you operate on the right. So you don't have to make an incision. Previously, when we were making conventional surgeries, we were bound by the incision. Right. So the organ which you want to operate, you have to put incision on top of that organ. Right. right. But if you have to do anything more than that, then you have to do an incision then there. Then you have to do incision there. Right. So now the versatility of laparoscopy has changed. Right. For example, in a person, the gallbladder which is up here, mm -hmm. we can remove the gallbladder. And if the lady has got a uterus problem or ovarian problem, we turn the telescope to the pelvis. Right. And with the same thing, you handle the pelvis as well. And the suppose has got an appendix, so you turn on this side, you remove the appendix also. Right. So the telescope point remains the same and you can go all around the abdomen or the chest or the joint right. with just one puncture. Right. You don't have to make multiple punctures or enlarge the punctures. Previously, many of our um, operations were where you put incision from here to the right. bottom. Right. So the whole abdomen is open. So you operate on the left, you operate on the right, you operate on other things. But in this one puncture itself gives of a telescope the, gives you the whole access of the whole cavity. Right, right. And also in a situations like hernia, inguinal hernia, where you have to operate on left hernia and right hernia both, you have uh, three punctures in the midline and you turn the telescope and operate on the left mm -hmm. and turn the telescope, operate on the right hernia. So the patient with just added couple of minutes of operation no extra incision and it's all done. Sir, uh, the way you have explained the stuff, uh, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm, I'm forced to make a comment here that it looks like science fiction is coming real. And, and interestingly, uh, just one puncture is giving me access to the whole cavity and you know, the whole, uh, uh, the system can be healed through, through that process. Sir, is there any restriction in terms of uh, do's and don'ts? Is there, is, is there a uh, fact that well, these are the kind of operations which cannot be done. Is, is there something yeah, of that sort? I think, uh, I, first of all, uh, in this, like, uh, uh, say, for example, flying, you have to have a very good training. Right. So it's important that the surgeons are trained well. That is one of the vital because, you know, it's, it's not, say, for example, not, not that driving car does not need a training, but I'm just saying that a car, if you are finding it difficult, you can just stop there right. and be safe. Whereas aeroplane, you can't stop. Right. You have to land, you have to take off, and there are weather conditions. The Everything complexity, has to be, changes. complexity changes. As the complexity changes, you have to have a, a good training background right. in a good center. That right. is one. Right. And then, like aeroplane, you have to have a very good aeroplane. You have to have good avionics, okay. which support and help you. Right. The same way, a laparoscopic surgeon should have a good equipment, a good camera system with a high resolution good uh, um, uh, support systems because and a good team and a good team because somebody is showing you a camera somebody is holding the laser somebody so all the instruments of destruction or construction or reconstructions are inside right. if the cameraman doesn't keep a track of all these pointed instruments right. the instruments may be damaging without because right. the surgeon will not be able to see which instrument is causing damage where for that, the cameraman has to keep all the four, five, six instruments which are in under the control. So, so you with have great to have power a, comes great responsibility uh, as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, if, but if you are trained well, if your equipment is good, if your team, team is good, then comes the importance of selection of the cases. One should not take the technology too far. Right. That means we should stop a, a just before you think you are going to damage the patient. And, and it's always, uh, I call it a strategic retreat of a surgeon. Right. You know, one of the, my famous and way I enjoy talking on those subjects is when the surgeon should retreat. Right. So it's a strategic retreat, right. which right. is very important for the team to understand yes. yeah, when you should stop laparoscopy and move on to the more reliable way of, of what we call is a conventional surgery. Right. Sir, uh, are there any specific diseases uh, or, or ailments uh, which uh, still is in beyond the ambit of laparoscopy? Well, of course, the first uh, glaring example is caesarean section. You can't do caesarean section by, as we always say. Right. But apart from that, when you have to deliver long, uh, um, uh, I would say very bulky organs intact, 
then laparoscopy may be you know it loses its uh, importance right. but uh, and also i would say many years back uh, the bleeding was also very uh, uh, a matter of concern for us right. Right. because uh, in the patients who have got a bleeding disorder we were not doing laparoscopy because uh, the instruments are so small that you can't stop the bleeding right. if there is a bleeding right. you know you have to put a pressure put a good sponge and press it with both hands right. to uh, stop the bleeding so but as i have seen in last 25 years with uh, we are getting lot of energy sources and sealants the blood vessel sealants uh, bipolar devices right. ultrasonic knives ultrasonic scissors which are we getting right. uh, which are working on the ultrasound principle of sealing right. Right. the blood vessel so i think uh, at the moment we hardly find any condition it just depends on the armamentarium which you have and it all depends on your experience and experience of the team right who, right how far they can go with this sir uh, i mean uh, i am uh, uh, amazed to know uh, the technology and how it is working on the human body and how we have moved from uh, elaborate cut to you know punctures which are healing us so at this point would you be able to highlight if not in real terms but maybe a some comparative of how the costs for a patient has changed i mean we are talking about technology which is very intensive in nature so it will have a cost whereas there is a definitive advantage of using minimal invasion so from that point of view is there something you would like to talk on the so when part? we talk about the cost i would always like to uh, put it little on a broader term right sir so that is the economics of as an operation right. now economic of the operation not only depends how much you spend on the surgery per se but also it depends how much man hour you save uh, in terms of uh, um, your resumption to work right. also we see even for a poor person like a, a say for example a taxi driver right. who has to lift the weight right. if the guy if you do a conventional surgery the guy is not a, allowed to lift say a suitcase or drive right. Right. maybe for 3 months right. but whereas in laparoscopy we say you can drive next day right. you can lift weight so the guy starts his re- earning potential his is earning not potential. hampered yeah hampered is, is is that is a, one of the big advantage so when we look at the economics of the surgery it's again i would say give a example of the air travel right so right. you may pay little extra to the air travel but the, the convenience time convenience saved is so so much that it compensates for what money extra so you have paid so our viewers i mean the information from you to our viewers is that you should look at the whole cost economics to evaluate and come at a conclusion correct right. correct right. and if you do it well uh, you will find that it is far 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 more economical than the conventional surgery right because uh, in conventional surgery the wound complication like infection of the wound hernias after the wound right sir so those things will lo- in a long term may need uh, longer uh, hospitalization right. expensive antibiotics right. repair of hernias on the long term repair of the complications on a long term so if you really look in holistically uh, laparoscopy surgery is economically much better option than the conventional surgery the opportunity savings is much more than the opportunity absolutely, cost absolutely and also please uh, uh, do not underestimate the pain factor yes the pain is so less that you know it gives happiness to the person right. to the relatives to the family that the person who has been operated is walking right. around right. joining them in the family activity right. joining them for a holidays joining so there is you know we everything cannot be compared so the psychological uh, cost is very low really? compared to absolutely right. Right. look at the cosmetics every time a person who has a conventional surgery would look at the scar which is 6 inches or 8 inches long okay. i'm sure he will not get a good feeling right, right. he will always say okay but it looks bad right. you know right. whether it is exposed or it is not exposed but having a a kind scars right. gives a very a, a very a, a satisfactory 
sort of you know feeling of satisfaction Correct. and seeing a long scar nicely healed everything but it still it has got a psychological disadvantage right. that it 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 impacts you somewhere yes. that i've got a very long bad scar right. so we have seen that this also and also in a personal life mm -hmm. uh, the scars are important so i was uh, reading it some days back that there are around 65 million obese people in india and obesity is on the rise because of lifestyle because of the way uh we have got into a sedentary mode in this context if you can please highlight what is bariatric surgery okay now i will say that from 99 if we look at the indian data which is available to us everything till 99 was absolutely fine as far as the obesity is concerned because that time we did not have the fast food we did not have the spare money to spend outside and mostly we were confined to uh, eating at home we were uh, uh, we had uh, the transportation what was not i'm sure you will recollect that if you make a uh, booking for a scooter the scooter was delivered 7 years or 8 years right. after you have booked it right. same thing was true with uh, cars like right. that right. fiat ambassador which you have to wait for a long period but now you think the so mo, you know mobility has increased that means your physical activity is reduced right. you have got spare money economics are is good right. you have got ways and means to spend that money outside and most of the people would like to spend it on eating right. outside right. so you eat some food which is not very healthy which has got a high caloric value right. Right. now the thing was also started with our multi story uh, flats where this with the lifts there now uh, please look around all the schools what they were 20 years back there was one building and there was used to be one football ground one hockey ground one gymnasium and things like that and there were no acs also and there were no acs and and now you see every school instead of one block they have got five blocks and those blocks are made where the playgrounds used to be instead of um, the sports uh, period which was there we have got a computer period right. Right. so this way we have on one side we have reduced our calorie uh, uh, um, uh, burning by, by sedentary um, uh, lifestyle and we have increased our storage abilities also yeah and then unfortunately uh, we in india and asia have got one uh, gene which is known as a thrifty gene now the thrifty gene what happens is that thrifty gene was evolved over centuries and decades and for the people who are starving so in a place like india we were fighting with malnourishment okay. so that's why over a period of time thrifty genes came in came in that means the thrifty genes conserves the energy so if you eat a little bit it just put it across in the terms of fat so that thrifty genes became responsible and came into picture previously during famine and during uh, uh, you know natural calamities right. we survived because of thrifty genes because a small amount of food was right. enough to keep us going. going but the same becomes a disadvantage right. when you have abundance of food right. and if you really look at it, it all started in 99 right. and in 2006 when we conducted a study in a, in a public school we to our horror and shock we realized that there are 33% of the children of the class 10th 11th and 12th are obese and that is a time when we sort of tossed this idea that every school should have a calculation of body mass index mm -hmm. bmi mm -hmm. which is simple calculation of weight in kilograms divided by height in square meter can be done at any way you don't have to go to any laboratory to do it and uh, we sensitize the schools that they should not look at the marks in mathematics or english or sub other subjects they should look at the bmi also if the bmi is increasing they should warn the parents that the bmi is increasing this child is going towards obesity and any science which deals with that with obesity is known as bariatric the word 
baros and bariatric those uh, greek words which indicate the increase in the weight right. and the related problems so this uh, over a period of time uh, we realize that it has a separate subject right. and that's how the bariatric science of bariatric came in right. so anything related with obesity whether it is medicine surgery uh, dietary restrictions psychological aspects everything are related to the bariatric so sir so, uh, coming back to the surgery part of it what happens in bariatric surgery what do we do well uh, when we talk about obesity i would say the fundamental thing today may or may not be very accurate is the bmi right. so the management of bariatric patients and obese patients starts what is the bmi right that is one right and what is the comorbid conditions like high cholesterol levels diabetes hypertension joint pains etc etc so what happens that uh, we start with a lifestyle no doubt if you make a pyramid the base of the pyramid as in majority of the diseases you will say is the lifestyle right. one has to make changes in the lifestyle right. we have to add some degree of uh, exercise walking swimming whatever you know a nominal into add that ideally taking care of the body I, ideally taking care of the body not only weight only but heart lungs right. joints muscles everything is right. including the depression and the psyche is taken right. care of right. so we have to look at the caloric uh, value of what we are eating so we have to reduce that caloric value right. and the second stage is adding some of the medicines and the drugs right. which has to be done by the bariatric physicians or metabolic physicians right. and they add certain drugs to help for weight loss okay but if it it doesn't work if the bmi is more than 32.5 with diabetes right. and 37.5 without diabetes right. then the surgery kicks in okay. that means that it has gone to a stage which has become irreversible okay. so reversing the obesity and losing the weight and maintaining that lost weight right. is not possible by even lifestyle changes and by drugs right. or diets right. that is a time when we feel that the patient is subjected to surgery right. and that is uh, bariatric surgery and the bariatric surgery is done as a laparoscopic surgery so we make multiple punctures in the abdomen and there are two or three major surgeries which we do one surgery of course is uh, we reduce the volume of the uh, stomach uh, when i say stomach it is the pouch right. where we our food goes and stays right. Right. so you reduce the uh, volume of that stomach by stapling the stomach right. so uh, when you eat the smaller amount of food will give you that satiety right. or a sense of right. hunger is gone right. and uh, another is that you add a little bypass the food does not go into the first part of intestine right. so the fat is not absorbed right. Right. and this way generally what we see that in after bariatric surgery in very indicated patients they lose weight almost about 6 to 8 kilograms and this motivates them for a for further, a further, further loss effort effort sir uh, what you mentioned about stapling and and you know creating a bypass uh, what are the complexities that we are we are talking about here well i would say that the complexities were there maybe uh, two decades back but with the passage of time what is happening because now as i mentioned that we have got a very uh, uh, high resolutions cameras etc right. and of we also we have evolved on the stapling devices okay. the stapling design the devices at the moment are phenomenal they are absolutely safe they seal they cut the stomach so as these technologies improving we have realized that the chances of the complications and the leaks and the bleeds have dramatically gone down so uh, with the while interacting with you i am also realizing that post the surgery that patient have to take care of himself i mean the surgery alone is not the end to it uh yes in a common words i would say this surgery acts like crutches which allows the person to move from one place to another place like the crutch does right. so this surgery helps the patients 
to lose weight with lesser efforts, I would say. So instead of doing gym for two hours or three hours or four hours, which becomes unpractical, if you walk for 15, 20 minutes, it works well. And uh, the best part of bariatric surgery is they, the patients, they feel as hungry as they used to feel before operation. That means the appetite is extremely good, right? Which gives a very good feeling. So the metabolism the is not affected it's by. It's not it. affected. At the same time, when they eat a small amount of food, the satiety is there. Right. What what satisfies the person that I am full? And the minimum energy required for the body to function uh, is already it, given. Yes. Yes. So the body is uh, taking as much calories as is desired, right. and the uh, the beauty is that the uh, appetite is of a healthy person right. and satiety or fullness is also of a healthy person with a lesser amount of food right. and that is is the success story for uh, this on the other side the failures of bariatric surgery mostly are uh, related with the patient when they start consuming high calorie liquids Unfortunately, alcohol is the commonest right. cause for failure right. because alcohol has got empty calories. Right. It has got no value. No value. Except the calories it provides. Right. And there's no way we can restrict liquids. And the absorption in the body is also very fast. Very fast because it goes straight away to the intestine. But this is the downside of it. Right. But what we have seen that these patients, majority of these patients, they do very well. And that is the reason uh, we call them frequently right. and the team is important. Right. So we have got a team which motivates and continues their motivation right. in this direction right. so that they, they maintain the lost weight. Sir, what is the uh, uh, cost involved in... I can understand that uh, bariatric surgery, I mean as a surgeon, you will understand the context of that individual and you know, you will administer a particular process. But what are the average costs related to? Now the average cost here, the I would say 70% of the cost what the patient spends, the 60 to 70% money goes towards the staplers because the staplers are expensive. Every fire costs about 10, 12,000 rupees. So even if there is a 15 fire, you know, you can calculate the money. I would compare it again with a, a stent in the heart. So putting a stent in the heart does not really cost much. What costs, why it looks bigger or more expensive is the cost of the stent. The same way the bariatric surgery, which is on an average, I would say maybe 2 lakhs, 2.5 lakhs, depends where we are doing it and what surgery we are doing and how many staplers are being used. If you really look at it, most of it is the stapler, which is... Which it's is a material used. cost. It's a material cost which has got uh, quite a bit of taxation into this. But as we have been sort of insisting and persisting and uh, government seems to be taking note of it and I'm sure soon the cost of the surgery will go down because the structure, the tax, the custom duty and excise duty and all other duties right, which right. reduce. Right. So once it reduces, we'll see a dramatic reduction in the cost. But at the same time, I would say that, again, if we talk about economics, the money which is spent comes back to the patient within two years. Okay. That means he saves within two years right. what money he has spent on the surgery, he saves that much money and after two years forever in his life right. in terms of other medications right. like management of diabetes, right. management of heart problem, management of kidney problem dialysis, kidney transplant, liver problems. It is cirrhosis. more an investment than a cost. Absolutely. And this investment, what you're doing, comes back to you within two years. And rest of the life, right. Right. you are gaining. Right. And uh, gaining uh, financially, uh, gaining psychologically, socially, countrywide, you say, right. the economics right. Right. of the country, because your productivity increases, the family life becomes better. In the females, the fertility improves after the surgery. 
in diabetes disappears in almost 90-92% right. patients. Right. The hypertension re reduces in 70-80% patients. Right. The joint problems. And apart from that, I said, the inner happiness, right. the self-esteem. Right. When you look in the mirror, when you dress well in a proper, otherwise, you know, you are always struggling to find yes. the right yes. uh, dress. Right. Those small little things. When you go out, somebody scolding you, somebody commenting on you, the whole aspect of dignity, the whole aspect of how people perceive you Absolutely. goes through a, a amazing transformation. Absolutely. And it reflects yeah. on your family life and your social life, your evenings, your working space, working place. You have more possibility of getting a better quality of job. So, you know, summing up on those opportunity costs of all these small, small things in our daily life actually converts this to and a half lakh as a cost as an investment. Absolutely. And this investment which pays you every year and every day, yes. every hour, every minute, every second. Right. And I say that uh, bariatric surgery uh, is the only surgery, if you really analyze it more um, uh, closely, mm -hmm. this is the only surgery which not only affects one organ, it affects the whole body. It, it affects the liver, it affects the heart, it affects the kidney, right. every part of joint, muscles. Right. And it, it, it does not stop there. It goes beyond that, that it helps in anxiety, depression, right. Right. fertility. There's no one single operation yes, yes. which has got so widespread advantages. Right, right. Uh, sir, uh, I mean, it is uh, inspiration talking to you. I mean, uh, I, I, on behalf of my viewers, would like to thank you for your time and the lucidness with which you explained everything. Sir, a kind word from you uh, as a, as a uh, parting note for our viewers. Well, I think I always say that uh, uh, viewers that uh, what is most important is not the internet information. It is not the uh, uh, other uh, information because there are a lot of information which is put on that is not authentic. That is one. Second thing is when you are looking at any of these informations, please look at the authentic sites and locations where you can find the correct message. Second point is, you must select the good team of doctors and a good institution who specializes into these sort of works. May it be laparoscopy, may it be bariatric surgery, may be surgery for diabetes, as you do it for heart or you do for cancer. So it's very vital. One should not look at the uh, cost because uh, cost comparison could be sometimes very... It may be penny wise and pound foolish. Yeah, absolutely. Because it is not the cost, it is the authenticity and excellence of that team and the, uh, and the institution, right. which might upfront may look a little more, right. but in the long term will give you a lot of safety lot of correct advice which is correct for the person right. and help you throughout the life right. with the support system. Sir, thank you so much for your time. From on behalf of MyNearCare and the whole team, I really feel very happy to have had uh, interaction with you and we look forward to such interactions in the future as well. Sir, thank you so much. Thank you. It will be always a pleasure and honor.